Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Sarah and I make lots of different lifestyle videos on my channel. I make lots of plus size fashion, cooking, cleaning, decor, mommy stuff, beauty. If any of that strikes your fancy, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down below and joined our little family. And if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram at Sarah England. And today's video is a really exciting one. It is one that I haven't done in years and I am so excited to do this one. This is probably one of my all-time favorite videos to ever film in my life and I'm so excited to share it with you. So back in the day, um, I have had many uh, YouTube channels in my lifetime. YouTube has been one of my greatest passions, one of my um, this is gonna sound so pathetic. One of my best friends. <laughs> YouTube is something that I've loved pretty much since its beginning. I can't even remember a time in my teenage years not watching YouTube, um, and it has changed so much throughout the years. But shortly after I graduated high school and was going to college, I started my first YouTube channel, and it was just pretty much what this is, minus being a mother. <laughs> um, I did lots of makeup and clothes and just stuff that I wanted to share whenever I wanted to share it. And I did a video um, quite often called What I'm Watching, Reading, and Listening To. And it was one of my very favorites to film because I absolutely love to share those things. I could talk about music, books, movies, TV shows, art, all that type of stuff for hours. It is my favorite thing to do. And I am so excited to finally share it with you. I don't know why I haven't done a video like this before. Um, at least on this channel and I have recently been sharing more and more of what I've been enjoying for music as well as books and movies and stuff like that on my Instagram and I've had so many of you guys asking for a video or just really loving those stories and um, so I was like you know what I'm gonna do it because I love this and I cannot wait to share it with you guys so um, we're just gonna break this down we're gonna break it down into what I'm watching what I'm reading and what I'm listening to so all of that's gonna go with TVs and movies books um, music and I will share all of my playlists on Spotify as well as a couple of like YouTube things and things like that so without further ado let's get started all right so the first thing I'm going to share with you is what I'm reading and this is literally like my life right now that's all I've been doing lately is reading I haven't been watching shows I haven't been doing anything like that I've had to take a big step away from social media and Instagram and even YouTube a little bit I was just so overwhelmed. I was feeling really, really down. I was really anxious. Of course, I feel like all of us are so anxious right now with the state of the world um, and just the consistent bad, negative news all the time. It was just so overwhelming and my mental health was just taking a big dip. Um, and I just decided, you know, I'm gonna step away. It's okay, I do not need it. And I'm just gonna enjoy getting back to things that I used to love and like the simpler living of life. And um, I started watching more movies again. I started watching more shows. I started just listening to music more and more again. Um, things that I've always loved and have had such a big passion for. And then I, were, uh, I was talking on my Instagram about a book and one of my best friends um, messaged me about the series that she recommended me. And I was like, all right, I'll give it a try. And guys, oh my gosh, this has taken over my life for the past like three weeks or so. Um, and it's, it's, mm, um, I've always been a huge reader. I've always really, really loved to read and just specifically fiction, although I do like some nonfiction as well. But the great thing about fiction is it's so consuming and all encompassing and submersive and you literally can read and become a totally different person. It's so escaping, it's so incredible. I love to read, have always loved to read. Um, but as I've gotten older, I've had it had a harder time. I would feel like really breaking into series again and I feel it's like oh I'm a mom I'm tired I'm an adult now maybe I don't love the stuff I used to love anymore things like that and it's really got me down I felt like I lost a superpower <laughs> because I used to be able to just like completely just go into a separate universe um, and I've tried to read so many books I've read a lot of books but and I've loved them but I've never I haven't gotten back in until a series so 
series I'm talking about is the After series. Um, if you know anything about this, this actually started on Wattpad. Um, Wattpad, Wattpad. And basically it was just like a self-publishing where you could write, you know, like fan fiction and stuff like that. Um, and then it was read 1 billion times, which is insane to me. Um, and so she published it and now it is a major motion picture and you can actually, um, watch it on Netflix. They have the first movie on Netflix and the second movie is just about to come out. Now, I had no idea that this was a book. I randomly, when I was doing my movie binge, I found this on Netflix, decided to watch it. It was like... It was, a, it was a pretty good movie, it's a pretty standalone movie, um, but I had no idea it was a book, but it cut off with kind of a cliffhanger, and so I was like, there has to be another one? Um, so I started Googling and found out that yes, there was another one coming out, and it was also a book series. Uh, but at the time when I found out it was a book series, I was like, well, I already found out everything that happens in the first one, I already see the characters, I don't know, I just, I'm just probably not gonna read it. But then my <laughs> friend said, you absolutely have to read it. The book is so much more content in it. It's different, it is so much better, and I completely agree. So if you've already seen the first one, still go back and read the books. It is so much better, like all things. I feel like books are always better than movies. Um, it is phenomenal, I love it. Um, so I wanna just tell you really quickly, the way that I make my universe when I read books and get super into them is I, one, create a playlist and I just listen to music all the time that makes me think about the series and I will share that playlist with you when I move on to the music. So I have a whole playlist dedicated to it. So when I'm reading, I just have the playlist going. I also, um, this is like so embarrassing to tell you. Okay, so instead of using my imagination, which I have a very vivid imagination and the issue with creating characters in my own head is because they constantly involve and change and it's just really frustrating. So instead, I decide to cast you know, actors and actresses in my head. Um, you know, they gotta, they gotta audition for the role in my head, they gotta try out, and I gotta figure out who fits. Well, the thing about this time, <laughs> the thing about this time is I've done that, and the issue is like, I wanted to get so into it that instead I've watched so many interviews, read so many um, articles, pretty much stalked, specifically the, the main character, the boy, Harden, I have uh, casted him and he is Dagger Montgomery <laughs> from Stranger Things, he played Billy. And now I feel like such a creep because I can't separate the two. So in my head, this dude who has nothing to do with this series whatsoever is the main character and it's like weird, I feel like I have this creepy crush on him but I've like projected all of my feelings. It's really strange, my husband thinks I'm a total dork. Um, but the issue with that is it makes it even more real because they're actual real people and so I've meshed literally the actor with this character, this fictional character, and I can't... Anyway, so my universe is very real to me right now. <laughs> um, and um, I don't think I've done that since probably Twilight, like where I've gotten so invested. And uh, it is so good though. I will say there's definitely uh, mature themes in this book. There is a lot of sexual innuendos, there's cussing, there's some violence. I definitely, this is not for young readers or the faint of heart. Um, and I will also just say that I wouldn't necessarily try to put the relationship between the two main characters on a pedestal of any kind. It is incredibly toxic, incredibly unhealthy. Um, it's not like an idolizing relationship by any means. So just so you know, I'm not trying to condone the behavior in this book at all. It's just a guilty pleasure. It's something to totally escape into. And um, this is the first one after I've read this one already. I'm almost completely done with After We Collided. This is the second one. I believe there's five in this series. Yes. And then I already have the third one ready to go. They keep getting bigger. Just keep getting bigger and bigger. Um, and it's just, it's just, it's insane. It's so good. Um, and there is one officially after that, and then there's like a, um, a prologue? No, like the one that comes before, a predating one. That's the last technically book. Um, anyway, so good, highly recommend, and if you don't want to read it, go watch the movie just for some fun. The second one's about to come out soon, and I can't get enough of it. All right, so this is something I already shared on my Instagram stories, um, and it is the Southern Slow Cooker Bible. Now, I love cookbooks, but I hate to buy them because I feel like 
a lot of times I don't love every single of most recipes in there. I'll only pick a couple and I feel like you can easily find them on Pinterest and stuff like that. So for me, I don't like to spend like $30 on a cookbook that's going to take up space that I'm not going to use. Um, so I like to rent them from the library and then I can, you know, copy the recipes down and stuff like that. Um, but this one I rented from the library because I was super into slow cookers. It's fall. I wanted to share with you all my fall fun things that I've been enjoying. Um, and so this is perfect for that. This is an incredible slow cooker cookbook. I like this one because the recipe recipes are not I feel like slow cookers there's only so much that you can do and you see the same recipes over and over and over and over again this has so many new ones that I never even thought to try there's from all different types of proteins vegetables holiday items desserts appetizers so many good things I really 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 like it so if you're looking for a good slow cooker uh, uh, cookbook this is great I also would suggest if you don't want to spend the money go check out your local library this is a really really good cookbook and perfect for the fall weather as everything gets colder you're looking for cozy meals that are easy that you can just throw on and go this is the one for you um, I'm just gonna talk about this one really quickly uh, if you guys have been watching for a while you know that we had a late miscarriage at 16 weeks and we lost our little baby boy um, back in June and it's been really hard. It's been getting harder because we're getting closer and closer to his due date and I should be very pregnant by now and it's just, it's hard. It's been a really hard loss for all of us. Um, but my mom bought me this devotional and it has been so incredible. It's called Loved Baby and I really recommend this one. If you are currently going through a miscarriage or a loss or if you have a loved one or a family member or a friend, this is a really, really great gift. I highly recommend it. I love um, the devotional on this. I love, it just, it breaks down exactly how I'm feeling day by day. It's great. I love grieving devotionals. We have, I have one that after my dad passed away, I think they're so helpful and it helps you really feel validated because there's so many emotions you feel, so many thoughts that you feel. Um, and having someone else just kind of feel them along with you and day by day is just super comforting. So I definitely recommend this one. It's not my fun favorite book to, you know, like tell you about considering the circumstances, but it is a really, really great devotional for um, infant loss. All right, um, fair warning, if you hear my kids screaming in the background, they're playing in their room. God knows what they're playing, but they're together. So if you hear loudness, only so much I can do these days. <laughs> anyway, the last book I wanna share with you is actually the book I plan on reading next. Um, and please let me know below any of your book recommendations, please. I would love that. I love, like I said, fiction. Um, specifically, I love some romance, you know? It's, I just, it's, it's, a, it's just fun. I like feeling butterflies when I read. So let me know below any books that you've really, really enjoyed. I'm kind of all across the map. I mean, I love still like teen lit. I love um, adult fiction, any of that type of stuff. So please leave me some recommendations down below. Um, but the book that I plan on reading next is actually nonfiction and it's The Hugo Lifestyle. Um, it looks like Higgy to me, but I think it's pronounced Hugo. It's a Danish uh, lifestyle and it's just about being cozy and comforting and enjoying your present moment and eliminating distractions and technology and things that aren't adding to your happiness and joy. Um, it's like handmade lifestyle and cooking and spending time to, with one another and creating like a really comfortable, cozy living environment, which is perfect for the fall time. You can um, like Google or YouTube so many different videos um, on this and so many different, like it's just coziness. Like if you like that and are attracted to that and just the warmth and like warm lighting and blankets and cozy beverages and just spending time with one another. This is the lifestyle for you. Literally, I can't think of anything better. Um, and so they have had a number of books come out recently, um, but I will have it linked below and put up a picture of the one that um, is coming in the mail. I ordered off Amazon. It is the the little book of uh, Heigo, Danish Secrets to Happy Living. Um, I will have it linked below and it has over 3,072 um, reviews and it's almost completely five stars. Um, and they ha even have like an adult coloring book that you can get, which I've also contemplated. Um, I just love the idea of this and I've been trying really, really hard lately to just choose joy and live in the present moment. And I know it sounds so cliche, but honestly, it has made the biggest difference in my week this week. It's literally been 
recently this week that I've really implemented it and it's so easy for me to play the victim it's just like my natural personality which I can't stand um, but it's easy to have like little pity parties and want to like complain and be upset and I've tried really hard to kind of change that and wake up in the morning being like okay I'm tired but I'm not gonna focus on that okay I don't really want to do this day I'm not gonna focus on that like I'm gonna choose to be present in the moment. I'm gonna choose to experience joy. I'm gonna choose to experience happiness. There's a lot in my life that's happened this past year that has been literally the worst things I can ever imagine. And I know so many of us are feeling that way with the state of the world, but I don't wanna longer just like resonate and stew in that. Um, and I think actually stepping away from, you know, social media was like my first step in this process. And then now just, choosing to be happy and choosing to have that joy and choosing to live in that present moment and find things that bring me those things. So this book I'm super excited just to kind of add to um, that lifestyle for us and our family. I think that it will just be so comforting and so loving and just create such a good environment for my girls um, and for myself and for my husband and help all of our relationships so anyway that's the next books I plan on that's the next book I plan on reading and although it is not fiction I'm still really excited with it let me know below if you've read that book or you've just looked into that lifestyle and living um, and if you've been enjoying it too all right so next is my probably favorite honestly out of everything and it is what I'm listening to so music is my therapy music is so important to my life i literally if you say like fall of 2015 i can instantly look back and rather have memories i think of the music that i listened to um which kind of paints the picture of my life and like the soundtrack of everything um it sounds so cliche to have a soundtrack to your life but it's it's shades and seasons of my life are filled with certain types of music and it's one of my favorite things to go back and listen to because it brings up so many memories and so many feelings it's crazy so like i said i have a spotify account i think every playlist is um public i will have that linked below my best friend and i have been creating playlists just about every season for like nine years now maybe ten um, so we have a lot of playlists on there that have a ton of different music typically like themed around autumn or Christmas or spring or summer or what have you um, so if you're looking for certain vibe music definitely check that out but like I said I also have my after playlist on there that is all themed music um, that I would imagine or gives me puts me in the mood to read or um, is totally what I would place with these characters and the vibe of the series um, and that's been so fun to really just add into the immersive experience when I was been reading and I've been lucky enough to try out some studio earphones um, these are wireless earbuds and these are the tolv tolv t-o-l-v i'm probably pronouncing that so wrong so i'm so sorry but um these they have a bunch of different um headphones and earphones on their website and these are the ones that i have um, they have a bunch of also different colors i chose it in this forest green color and it comes with this beautiful like corded brown rustic rope like the most beautiful headphones that i've ever seen and even on top of them they have these kind of like copper um, little button this is what you press to pause to go to the next track phone calls all that type of stuff these are all bluetooth with the latest bluetooth bluetooth technology so when you fully charge these they have a span of seven hours of battery life and then the case is also a charger just like Apple ear pods or big name brands out there um, and they have an additional four full charges which equivalent equivalent to six full days of life the sound in these are incredible I had no idea what I was missing um, I had been recently thinking about getting wireless earbuds just because I was so annoyed with the rope and the cord and not being able to go and leave things. Um, and then Studio was so kind to reach out to me and wanting to send me these to test out and share with you guys. This isn't sponsored or anything, they just sent these to me for free. Um, and I was so excited. And let me tell you, I have no idea how I've been listening to just cheap wired headphones for so long um the other day i left these behind because they were charging and i totally forgot about them and i only had my wired earbuds 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 in my purse and i popped them in 
and going from this back to those was the worst. The sound was terrible. I could hear so much outside sound. These are insanely good. They have a mic, they're Bluetooth. You can take calls, you can record on them. Um, you, It's easy to go between songs, to pause. They're incredible, they're comfortable. I love them. I honestly have no idea, don't notice when I'm wearing them. I walk around all the time, especially with virtual learning. It's added so much to my day. <laughs> to be able to have music playing um, so Olive isn't getting distracted and I can play and listen to it without having to cord and like carry my phone around like this all the time. These have changed my life. I love them. I highly recommend them. Like I said, they have a bunch of different styles um, on their website. And right now they're offering a promotion when you buy um, any, make a purchase, you get a free, um, really nice card holder which is great because I have so many gosh darn cards, don't we all? Um, but those come for free. And you also can use my code SarahMarie15 to save you 15%. Um, and to let them know that you will appreciate this, like I said, I don't get any commission or anything that just lets you know, lets them know that you like this video and um, that I sent you. So without further ado, let's go to the music. For music, like I said, my Spotify playlist will be down, my link to my profile will be down below. And I do follow a lot of like random playlists and stuff like that. And normally what happens is I pick a vibe or search something and then I listen to the whole playlist and I pull songs and then I stop following that playlist and just add it to my own playlist. Um, so to kind of curate my own. Um, but my current playlist that I have made besides the after playlist, I just made one specifically for you guys and it's called October and in there are songs that give me October vibes, whether it's like the actual fall season as it really does get a lot more really colder, at least here in Texas. Um, and then or songs that specifically mention October. <laughs> or I also have some creepy ones, like ones that are just not like scary, but just have like a fun kind of creepier vibe to them because it's almost Halloween. So um, I have a whole playlist um, called October that you can listen to as well as um, my after playlist and I also on my insta stories had created a whole fall playlist that I um, shared with you guys so I will have all of those playlists separately linked below if you want to go straight to just those um, but like I said my best friend and I make a new playlist pretty much every single season and we just keep adding and adding and adding to songs that we discover things that we're into or like or themed for the season and the one we have right now is called believing for more i will have that one linked below and those are just a collaborative between her and i and things that we've been really liking and discovering and then my playlist that's been going on i think since last october since my we lost my dad is called it's been a year and it was just so relevant that i didn't want to start a new <laughs> playlist because this year it's been a freaking year right so i have that linked below and once again that has just a lot of different songs on it that are just specifically for me um but yeah i hope you enjoy all those music um choices for you i wish i could share some with you right now um because I love to be able to listen with you, but of course, copyright can't do that. Um, but specifically people that I've been really enjoying lately, um, I've been really into Harry Styles, man. His newer album is so good. Um, and they're just songs that I keep replaying over and over and over again. And one particular, it's called Chateau by Ang Angus and Julia Stone. They're a phenomenal band. I used to listen to them all the time in college. Um, and I recently rediscovered this song I think it came out around 2017. I recently rediscovered this song um, because I found that they had an acoustic version and I think I added that actually to the fall playlist that I share with you guys. This song is so good. Both the fall or the acoustic one and the regular one, it is so good. It gives me really nostalgic memories that I can't quite place. It makes me so happy and it was actually one of the big like I don't know, encouragers for just like living in the moment and enjoying life. Um, and so I listen to it nonstop. My kids are getting so tired of me listening to it all the time, but it's just so good. And ironically enough, this is not how it meant or I intended it to work out as all, but I had started my book series, it started after, and I was making my playlist and stuff like that, and I came on the song and I was like, this is just so good, it just makes me feel good, I like it, I can kind of get the vibe from the book, and then I dumbly Googled a music video, and guess who was in the freaking music video? Freaking Taker. So, it just added more, the whole, it just full circle, 
my world just keeps going full circle with my obsession and I was like well see it was meant to be so that song is actually added twice onto my after playlist the original as well as the acoustic because it's so good regardless of my obsession with the book or Dacre it is a phenomenal song and I highly recommend it I've also been loving, and who hasn't, everyone has, been loving Taylor Swift's new album. It is so good folklore. It is phenomenal. I say this to my best friend all the time, but she's incredible about reading the room, basically, when she comes out with a new album because it's exactly, like, spot on the current culture and like trends it's insane because her musical evolution has changed so much from when she started in country to where it is now and each new album hits it like right when it's like meant to be so popular it's incredible like i don't know if it's her pr team or like she's the one who's like making the trends i don't know but like folklore came out and it's now we're all into this new like cottagecore vibe and like slower music and just like more i just it's perfect um, and I have been absolutely adoring the album. There's so many, so many good songs on it. My number one favorite probably is Exile. I listen to that 90 times a day. It's also on the after playlist. That is a phenomenal song. And she's doing it with Bonnie Iver, who is one of my favorite artists and just like is the soundtrack to most of my college years. And um, so that song's great if you haven't heard it, but I'm sure you have. I also love My Tears Ricochet. I think that is so good. I think I add that into the October playlist as well because it's kind of like creepy, but it's not. It's so good. Um, August is really great. Invisible Strings really great. I mean, the whole album, phenomenal. Highly recommend if you haven't listened to it. I know some people are like, oh, it's Taylor Swift, but she's great, okay? I have, last year with my Spotify, um, like year roundup she was my number one artist that I listened to and my number one song was lover and I don't remember how many hours I listened to that song but it was like ridiculous amount it was like 20 hours or something that I listened to that song in total which just tells you how much I listen to music and how on repeat if I listen to a good song how often I play it um, but I didn't even realize that I listened to her so much until that came out and I was like oh my gosh they're right I really do because she's super super good I also feel like a weird creepy adult because I've discovered so much music through TikTok now. <laughs> However, there are songs that I used to love back in the day and like my hipster self comes out and was like, oh, I liked that before that was cool back in like 2009. I mean like such a dork. But um, there's so many good songs on TikTok. I've discovered so much music that I never knew about until now and I have been loving that. So you're gonna probably see a lot of popular TikTok songs on there um, because they're great and they just like are perfect for videos and they just ugh create the soundtrack right lastly lastly i want to share my favorite worship song that i've been listening to non-stop lately and it is graves into gardens by elevation worship i love the live one they also have a studio version but the live one is phenomenal it is so good i believe that is on um my collaborative playlist with my best friend as well as my it's been a year playlist it is such a good good song um, it is perfect for just like, I don't know, just finding the joy and just like breaking free. It is so good if you've never listened to it. Highly recommend. Also, I love watching the uh, music video for it. It's, it's a live worship set um, at Elevation and it is just incredible. Like it brings me like so much emotion and tears almost when I watch it. My girls love it. It is just the best. So I definitely recommend that. If you are interested into more worship music, I have a whole playlist on my Spotify that is just strictly worship music. It's called Some Will Seek, Wolf Some Will Seek Forgiveness. Um, and that is just my Christian worship music playlist. Um, I also have lots of like random ones. I have like a jukebox one, that's what it's called. And it's just all of my favorite oldies songs. Um, I have ones from like high school where I was super, super into scene music and like, oh man, that, that is the, what the playlist that literally makes me feel so many funny feelings in my tummy because I, it's just, it's such a weird thing. Um, but that one's so good. I have so many playlists on there for so many different types of things. When I was growing up, I was really into country because that's what my family listened to. So I have a whole country music playlist on there. I have so much. So I probably have something for everybody. I would recommend checking them out if you're into some music recommendations and um, just need some soundtracks to your life, man. I cannot wait to see the year roundup and how much I've been listening to music this year, especially lately because it's just nonstop. It's nonstop. No matter what I'm doing, I have music on and I love that about my life. I try to share that with my girls. I have a playlist called Olive and Eleanor on um, my Spotify and 
just music I want to share with them, music that's helped me through some hard times, um, things I just love, things that I think, songs that I feel like you can learn lessons from, ones that are just so good. Like I just, it's so important to me that I share my love with of music for them. I am not musically capable in any shape, way, or form. I wish I was. I so do. But um, I love it so much as a listener and I'm trying to just bestow that love and gratitude for music on my girls and I feel like lately they've been doing it. They'll ask for certain songs like, hey, can you put can you put that one on? And it feels so good just to listen to it with them and then them sing about it and my oldest has been listening to the lyrics more and have been asking questions about it. Like, what does this mean? Why does he feel like this? And it's been such a fun way to engage and just existential conversation with my five-year-old but just kind of breaking down because she doesn't you know know about so many things yet and it's really kind of fun to kind of create come up with my own concepts and ideas and really form how I really feel about certain things and be able to explain that to her too it's just great it's just great that's all I gotta say all right so like I've said we are on our last bit of it and that is what I'm watching so I'm gonna break down the movies I've been joined as well as the TV shows that I've enjoyed um, I feel like I went through a huge spell after we had our miscarriage. I just watched movies non-stop. I watched so many movies. Um, it was just like I said, a way to escape. I didn't have to think about anything. Um, and it was just, I really, really, I wouldn't even say I enjoyed that time, but I enjoyed watching movies again. I feel like I hadn't watched movies in so long. And now my husband and I have been having kind of like date nights at home where we just do movie night Mondays and we alternate each week of picking a new movie to watch and it's been so nice. Um, I just forgot how great movies are. But the movies that I've been enjoying lately and wanna share with you that are more fall related, um, the one that we watched, the first movie night Monday was Dan in Real Life. I posted it on my Instagram stories and I had a lot of questions from you guys what it was. It's called Dan in Real Life. It is so good. It's with um, Steve Carell. He plays the lead role in it and it is a drama. Um, but he's still comedic a little bit in it, but his he's such a good actor, and I love seeing him in different portrayals of different things. Really recommend it. It's such a good fall movie. Um, I always thought it takes place during Thanksgiving, but it's not. They just go for a big family reunion up into this, like, lake house. I believe it's, like, in New York somewhere, um, and it's beautiful, and it's just so family-friendly, and it's so cozy. The cinematography, the editing, everything is beautiful. I love the soundtrack. It is so good. Dane Cook is also in it, and he's hilarious and great, and oh my gosh, highly recommend. Unfortunately, it's not on any streaming services. We had to rent it from Amazon Prime. Um, it's only like $1.99. So it was worth it, but it was frustrating because I wish they had it on streaming services. Um, but really, really, really good. Perfect fall movie. Um, Definitely Maybe is one that we watched actually when we were in like a two-week quarantine when we had been exposed to COVID. Thank the Lord above we know we wouldn't got it. Um, but we watched Definitely Maybe. That is such a good fall movie too. Ryan Reynolds is just great and everything, isn't he? And I love him in that movie. Abigail Breslin is super cute in it. She's really little and she plays his daughter. There's a bunch of other high build, high amazing celebrities and actors in that movie and actresses. It's such a good movie. I'm sure you've seen it, but if you haven't, you absolutely have to. It is on a streaming service. I really should have nailed this down, which service it's on, because I literally think I have every one of them. We have Hulu, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, Netflix, HBO Max, Peacock, um, I go back and forth with Stars and Showtime. <sighs> is that all of them? That doesn't feel like all of them. We do Nickelodeon. It's just ridiculous. Like the, I spend way too much money on streaming services. I wish there was just one collective one and that's all it was, but that's not how it's gonna happen. And I'm gonna end up paying like $200 a month soon, but it's just, I can't, I can't. It's like an, ex it's, it is an absolute necessity in my life. Um, so I can't tell you which streaming service is on, but I do think it is on one of them. The next one my husband and I watched randomly was called How Do You Know? And it's not like necessarily fall themed at all, but it's with Paul Rudd and Reese Witherspoon. I had never, and Owen Wilson, I had never seen it before. I just seen, seen pictures. I believe it's on Netflix. Um, and I just never was like, eh, whatever. We watched it. The beginning was like the weirdest thing. We could just never keep up. We didn't really know what was happening. We almost turned it off and it ended up being such a cute movie. It is such a cute chick flick. Definitely recommend if you're looking for just something light and easy and sweet. Paul Rudd is great. I feel like he is like the nicest human being. He just seems like such a nice guy and like partner. Um, and he's so good in that movie. So, so cute. Jack Nicholson's in it. 
really recommend just a really cute easy movie it makes me happy it gives me like the old classic like chick flick vibes and just so sweet um the next movie is one of my all-time favorite movies one of my all-time favorite books it's on netflix i believe and it's the perks of being a wallflower this is actually the only time i think in my whole entire life that i can say that i think the movie was better than the book and that's saying something that's saying a lot because the book is one of my all-time favorite books i actually have a print that i bought um when i was like high school or college that's hanging up in my girl's room um with just passages from the book and an outline of Charlie. It is such a good, poignant, just culturally relevant book. It is incredible and I actually think it takes place during the 90s so it's not even like present day um, but it is so good. The book is insanely, it's incredible. Um, I feel like it should be something that children are, you're not children, definitely not children, but like high school students should have in their curriculum. It's great, but I do think that I like the movie ending a little bit better. It's a little bit happier because the book ends pretty darkly, um, but the movie is so good. Emma Watson's in it. Um, Charlie is played by, and I cannot think of his name right now, I was just looking at a picture of him the other day, but he played um, Percy Jackson um, in Percy Jackson, an Olympiad, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> um, it's so good, you have to see it. May, May Whitman's in it and I love her. It is incredible if you've never seen it before. The soundtrack is so good. It definitely, I almost got a huge tattoo across my um, collarbone back when I was in college, right when I turned 18 because I loved that book so much and I was gonna get a um, sentence from the book from it and it's still one of my all time favorite things in the whole entire world. So good, perfect for this time of year. Um, for a more Halloween themed kind of spooky movies, we watched Ready or Not and that was such a good, fun movie. Um, it I think it's on a ton of different streaming platforms um, but it is, basically like a hide and seek game um, with a very wealthy family this bride marries into them um, and she has no idea but they play hide and seek after because they have you just have to see it basically they're hide and seek and if they find her they can they can kill her and if not if she makes it through sunlight then she wins but there's a lot more to it you have to see it I love just like the creepiness to it it makes me kind of feel like clue a little bit it is so good it's perfect for this time of year because it's not scary but it's just kind of creepy um, and I really like it and the actress who uh, was the lead she was beautiful and great and Adam Brody in it and who can't you know who can't get enough of Adam Brody am I right speaking of Adam Brody <laughs> my next uh, recommendation is Jennifer's Body um, and I loved that movie it's also in a streaming platform I believe um, and I loved that movie it's with Megan Fox and Amanda Seyfried Adam Brody um, there's a bunch of uh, celebrities and stuff in it and it is kind of like a cult classic it's definitely it's by diablo C cody who made juno so it has like this like indie vibe to it there's a lot of lines in there that are like kind of crazy and cringy but great at the same time i love that movie i saw it beginning of college and i just remember just loving it so much the soundtrack is super great um it is definitely a guilty pleasure and it's not for the faint of heart i would definitely it's tv mature um but i really like it and i recommend it it's perfect for halloween um the other one that is i think on amazon prime but it's knives out incredible movie an incredible cast um, my husband loved it. We saw it in the movie theater. It was really, really good. Um, it's fun. It kind of has the clue vibe. It's a murder mystery movie. It is so good. Highly recommend that one. Once again, another really good movie for Halloween without being too creepy. I'm not including a lot of horror movies in here because I honestly haven't watched like horror movies in so long. I used to love scary movies. But after I had kids, like my demeanor changed and they make me sick to my stomach and I can't handle them. Like my anxiety just shoots through the roof. So I like creepy movies. I don't like scary movies anymore. Um, but that one is so good. Cabin in the Woods is next. This is one of my all time favorites movies. And I think it's by Josh Whedon. Um, Josh Whedon? Josh? Josh. Josh. Anyway, I think it's so good. Um, I feel like people either love this movie or they hate this movie. It's kind of another cult classic. I love this movie. I think the idea and concept is so smart and fun. 
um, and it's a bit more on the horror side. It's pretty gory, but it's so good, and um, we we're about to actually watch that for movie night Monday, and really recommend. That's on a lot of streaming platforms right now. And lastly, of course, after um, from my book series, if you don't want to read the books or if you've read the books and haven't seen the movie, it's on Netflix. Really good. Definitely not the characters I would pick now to play them, obviously, um, but they still did a good job and it's just fun. It's good. The soundtrack for that movie is incredible. Um, I'm excited to see the second one, but I want to make sure I read all the books before I see the second one because I'm not letting it corrupt my vision of who the characters are in my mind. All right, that's it for movies. So the last couple things I want to share with you are just TV shows. Um, I honestly haven't been watching a whole lot of like new TV shows or anything like that because I've been reading a lot and we've been watching a lot of movies, but I did binge watch Virgin River, which was so good. I started the first episode and I was like super hipster and bitter about it because it reminded me so much of Heart of Dixie, just like more of a dramatic version of it. And they even had the same freaking doctor um, from the, I can't think of his name right now, um, from Heart of Dixie. And so I was like, I'm watching this. This is so, this is such a rip off. And then I watched it and I, it was incredible. <laughs> it is so good. Once again, the music for that show was really, really great. It is the perfect fall themed vibed show. Um, and they're about to have a season two, I think released this fall, which is really exciting. It was just good. It was an easy show to watch. There weren't that many episodes, but it totally sucks you in once you get into it. And I really, really liked it. And so if you're looking for a beautiful fall themed show that isn't spooky or anything like that, that is, should be go down on your list. Um, and then lastly, the other show that we've been watching that is not fall related at all, but it's just what we've been kind of been watching for the past couple of um, months now has the, been The Big Bang Theory. It's on HBO Max. And this is one of my all time favorite shows. It just makes you happy. It makes you feel welcomed. It feels like you're hanging out with the cast all the time, the people in the show, the characters. It's so good. Um, and I love the writing. I think it's so funny and I like, it's just smart. It's just a good show. It's a good comedy show, sitcom. Um, and my dad used to love that show. It was one of his favorite shows. And so it just makes me feel close to him. Like we're watching it together again. And it's been making me so happy. But let me tell you, it's taken months <laughs> to get through this show, which is crazy because we will binge watch a couple episodes at a time and they're only like 20 minutes and we still have, I think a couple seasons left and we've been watching it for months, but it is so good. Definitely recommend that one too. If you've never seen the Big Bang Theory, it's hilarious. And it's just something that just makes you feel happy and cozy and brings back a lot of nostalgia for me too. Um, all right, so that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope I gave you some recommendations for books, movies, music, TV shows, things that you are looking forward to. I know that for me, fall is so important to me. Um, I love to put myself in the fall vibes and moods and that's why I create music and I watch certain movies. It just adds to my season and brings me so much joy. Speaking of, if you haven't gone into my Escape to Another Place playlist and you like ambient rooms, I highly recommend you do. I think I have like 400, close to 500 videos on that playlist already, which is insane. Um, but they are so good. And if you're looking for a fall themed one, I have so many on there. There's also a ton of Halloween themed ones. Um, and soon will be Christmas time. But I love to do that, especially when I'm reading. I put a room on my TV because we have Google Cast in here. Google Casting? Chromecast. Yes. And then I read, I have my music playing and it, it's just like this perfect little bubble for me. And I've been finding so much joy and happiness lately with that. So if you guys need a break, take a step away from social media, find something that's bringing you joy and live in that, uh, cozy Danish living life. I keep not pronouncing it. Hi, go lifestyle and just enjoy it and find some joy in the season that we're in because as I know it's so difficult and so hard right now but soon the season will pass and we will just be left with the memories and I'm trying so hard to create good and beautiful ones that is going to be it finally um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys very soon in my next video bye guys